Um, so I very much recognize that I'm the only thing standing between you and a break after a very long day. So you'll be happy to know I've cut my slide presentation down to 57 slides. <laughs> Just kidding, it's only eight at the most. Um, so yes, thank you again. It's re really a pleasure to be here and to be speaking in front of you guys to today. And this is going to just be a brief update on an initiative that you probably have heard about in previous meetings um, where I was not at. Um, and so, and this is a work of, um, that was really started by people like Julie and um, Noel and, and um, Ev and a whole other host of people um, long before I arrived at Sabin Vaccine Institute. Um, and it arrived and it was a work then under the auspices of, of ICVA. So I do encourage you um, after this session to also reach out to them and talk to them more about the, the, this initiative and where it's going. And I'd, I'd like to start off by saying that, you know, I've, I have had a lot of work experience in various settings, but I'm probably, of all the, the, the people here, the least versed in what is the vaccination and immunization. A lot of my work has been really more centered around social behavioral interventions and communications around a broad range of, of health issues. And it was only a couple of years ago um, under the, my PhD work with Heidi Larson that I really got fully immersed into um, vaccination and immunization issues. And, at, and I did a lot of work, but then more recently, um, a lot more work based living and working out in Sierra Leone around global health security agenda. And part of my work there was really also bringing these issues of social behavior change and co communication into outbreak settings and rebuilding disease surveillance systems um, to be more resilient to future outbreaks and pandemics. So after what was quite an intense two years in Sierra Leone, I got the invitation um, from Bruce at Sabin to come and help with this initiative that they wanted to start on the, their vaccination acceptance work. Um, and I really jumped at the opportunity to really bring to, to, together what were some key themes and, and interests that I had been working on. And so starting in November, I came to Sabin under the auspices of this ICVA en entity. Um, and it was the International Collaboration for Vaccine Acceptance at the time. And the idea of it is really still the idea that's behind the Vaccination Acceptance Research Network, VARN, to today. And it's this idea that you bring to together researchers with expertise in vaccination um, behavior and so social behavior of sciences and training and research together with immunization programs and people who are really implementing the, these programs on, on the ground with the aim of being able to, to address these challenges that are behavioral and, and context um, specific for the improvement of immunization pr programs. So that is still very much the theoretical framework behind VARN. Um, and nothing much has changed. What I think has changed and what we're grappling with is the fact that, you know, a theoretical framework does not equal an operational framework. So how do you actually make this work in reality? Getting um, a great group of people with expertise, but how do you translate that into actual um, impact on the ground? So we have a general structure, which began um, back in February, um, uh, which um, after reconstituting the network and asking for new applicants to be a part of the steering, 
the, the formation and development of what is an operational model for, for barn. And these are so, some of the people. And so we, we current structure is that we have a research committee and a steering co committee. And the, those two committees really work together in ter terms of driving what we do, how, when, um, and, and where. And over the past, I, I would say, six months, we have been in a construction phase. But some of the key um, outputs are there in, in your booklet, um, which is forming this committee, um, continuing to, to, to support a, a study in, on vaccination acceptance in Romania that um, Julie and Ev have been leading, initiating another re research study that is getting more into what are the, the vaccination um, acceptance research needs from the perspective of, of immunization program managers and policy makers, and trying to find also other groups that are doing this and where we can partner and we can partner in a more synergistic way and not be redundant in terms of all of the other initiatives around vaccination confidence and hesitancy and, ex and acceptance that's currently currently going on. And our major um, platform for engagement at the moment is the website. So I encourage you to visit that and have a look around. It is definitely a work in progress. Um, we have a, a framework right now with this website to build on based on the feedback of you and other people that might join the, this initiative. So far, we have some sense that people are interested in, in engaging in this website and in this network for these reasons. I mean, getting the latest news and research, connecting with colleagues, um, of course, finding other research and, and funding opportunities, information about professional meetings and conferences such as this. So we're going to be you know, continuing to grow with those, those things in mind. But uh, I think we also want to think about what are the more substantive things and things that are going to really create, like, the best impact under all of these sorts of categories. So what's next? What's now? Um, we are in the midst of finalizing what is a, a two-year strategy. Um, this is a strategy that's been put together with input and interviews from various um, committee members at the, at the moment. It's blurry on purpose because you're not supposed to see it and hold me accountable for these activities in a year from now. Um, but, but it's really going from the, the abstract to the tangible. What are the key activities that this research network can do? And then grounding it in place and time and, and resources based on, you know, sit, N not only the current like resources that Save and Vaccine Institute has to, to, to dedicate, but also um, what we would need in terms of um, as we're going out to, and talking to various potential funders for, for other activities. So that is there. And then once that is finalized, we are going to prioritize um, and really prioritize as to what are going to be those quick, demonstrable, kind of similar to what Hugo was saying, um, wins that we can achieve given our resources that are available. Um, and then really start implementing those actions as a way of growing the network. I have a very um, significant concern about, you know, drawing people to a website and to, to an entity only for them to look behind the curtain and find that there's nothing there. So I think the way that you really get people on board is by doing and showing the value added of, of, this, of this entity. And then the third thing that you know, I, is a real priority at the moment is really finding other um, initiatives, as I said, and, and um, projects that Vaughn could um, synergize with in simple ways and what, whether that just means
being able to partner on, on a, in a meeting that's go, going to be happening in, in Argentina or, or, or somewhere else. Um, Varn is one part of what I do at Sabin. The other part is, uh, is really growing Sabin's vaccine acceptance program as a whole. And as a part of that, I have been working on other initiatives um, that I think that Varn could could eventually um, feed into and provide expertise to. And one of this is, has been the real successful piloting of our small grants program, um, a program that now has us awarding um, three small grants in for behavioral interventions for vaccine ex acceptance, currently in Sierra Leone, Uganda, and, and India. The Uganda one is around HPV vaccination, so I'll have to talk to Doug um, after this about where we can offer other insights. So that's, that is really where we are. And I guess the question that everyone asks at this point is, how do you, how do you work with this? How do you follow what's, what's going on? How do you be a part? Um, as I said now, just Go, go to the website, sign up, tell us what other things you want to do, um, what, do what do you think we should be doing, um, share information about what you're doing as the website and the platform grows. It should be a good platform for advertising other um, initiatives, um, your work, your, your articles, just share. At some point, hopefully, and if this is the way um, if this is the way that feedback continues to tell us to go, um, we have floated the idea of formalizing like this directory of expertise as a means of people accessing more, more um, specific information about the people in, in the network and the kind of support that they could provide both to um, immunization programs and in terms of um, other research co collaborations. So that is, that's pretty much about it. Go to the website. <laughs>